if you went into the lab to create the most perfect Mariners win, I think this is pretty much what you would come out with. Dominant pitching, some good offense, some home runs, and then Gregory Santos, welcome back, like locks it down in the ninth inning. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into the Seattle Mariners post-game recap. Mariners win this one tonight, 8-3 to three against the San Diego Padres. They improved to 50 and 43 on the season, and they maintain a two-game lead in the American League West. Second time uploading the video, upload the first one without sound. I do apologize. So actually, this is not the second time uploading, the second time doing the video. Um, I don't know what happened on the last one, so I had to use a new computer here, so the angle and everything's a little off. Um, so I do apologize about that, but we can enjoy the win in silence, I guess. You can look at it. Before I dive any further, do me a favor, smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you're new or lurking. I'm on the road to 4,000 subs and comment your thoughts on this game down below. But yeah, really just overall about as good of a Mariners win as you could dial up. And the stars were stars tonight. We taught me and Mariner Sir talked about it. I've talked about it before. We can make all the trade acquisitions we want. And I'm not saying they shouldn't, but until Julio Rodriguez, Cal Raleigh, Jorge Polanco, guys like that start stepping up, the guys that should be your key players, it won't matter. And they all stepped up tonight. Julio has his best game of the season. Cal probably has his. And truthfully, Jorge Polanco probably has his, his best game of the season as well. And Logan Gilbert with a dominant Cy Young level performance. Shame that he couldn't finish off that eighth inning. Honestly, it looked like Logan Gilbert was primed to go nine innings tonight, to be perfectly honest. Uh, he was at 80 something pitches in the eighth. Unfortunately, Higashioka gets him for the two run home run, ends his outing. He pitched much better than the three earned runs, strikes out seven, walks two. Did he walk one or two? Let me pull up the box score real quick here and then I'll see what it was. Let me pull it up real quick. Give me one second. Logan was seven and two thirds, four hits, three run, three runs, three earned, one walk, seven strikeouts, two home runs. Cronenworth uh, got him for the home run, I believe, in the seventh inning. But yeah, Logan just dialed in. Was at like forty five pitches through five innings. Still only threw eighty seven. I mean, you still could have made a case for him to finish the eighth and maybe even still go the ninth. But I think after giving up the home run. You know, you didn't want to give any momentum back to San Diego. Saucedo comes in, does a nice job to get Luis Arise to ground out, puts it into any possible rally. And I know they wanted to get Gregory Santos in a game, and this felt like the perfect spot to do it. You got a five-run lead, a little bit of a softer landing for him. I, listen, you know, it's it's a pennant race. You got 69 games left now. If he needs to pitch in high leverage, bases loaded, nobody out, then that's what he's got to do. You know, the Mariners aren't in a position to really wait around. But I'm sure, you know, all things being equal, they would like to ease him back in a little bit more. And that's what they did tonight. I uh, thought Santos looked really good. Got a little bit of a beef with Jerks and Profar. Uh, first two pitches up and in a little bit on him. I was a little surprised by Profar's reaction. I don't think there's anything intentional there. There's no history between the two of them. So I'm not really sure what that was about necessarily. Well, I shouldn't say that. Two pitches came up and in on Profar over 90 miles an hour. I Anytime, if you're a hitter, I, I will understand being frustrated about that, right? Anything near here thrown that fast is going to be something you're a little bit concerned about. But uh, Santos kind of gave it right back. You know, l listen, if like I, I've said, I didn't really like like what the Astros did last year against the Mariners with Hector Neris staring down Julio and stuff like that. I thought it was a little childish. I didn't really understand it. But you know what? Sometimes you need some of those Bulldogs, especially the back in your bullpen guys aren't going to put up with stuff. Guys aren't going to back down. Uh, and Santos kind of looks like that because as soon as Profar looked at him, he kind of threw his hands up and he did it again after the third pitch. He kind of threw one more down the middle. And obviously, you know, I don't know what was said, but I bet it was something along the lines of, you know, is that better? Is that better for you? And, you know, they were kind of giving it to each other. You know, maybe they're friends. I don't I don't know the whole story there, but um, it was good to see. And then Santos gets three pretty quick outs. Uh, well, Polanco boots a grounder, but then he gets the double play. That's what makes Gregory Santos. I think I keep Santos at Santos. What makes Santos so good is listen, he can miss bats. He's not going to walk people, but he keeps the ball on the ground. And everything tonight was just pounded into the ground against him. And here's the thing the difference between ground balls and fly balls. Listen, an out's an out. But at the end of the day, the more ground balls you give up, the less big rallies you're going to have. Yeah, there can be seeing eye singles. But even tonight, 
couple of those get through. Worst case is you got a couple base runners. Whereas, you know, if they're in the gap, you know, a 7-3 lead, you're probably 8-3 lead, you're probably fine. But, you know, home runs, doubles, triples, you know, more extra base hits. So even if Santos isn't racking up a ton of strikeouts or getting a ton of swing and miss, he can get strikeouts. I believe his swing and miss was not huge last year, if I'm not mistaken. I did a video on Santos. Go check it out. I had all the numbers there. But the thing was, he keeps the ball on the ground. So that's fine. I can deal with pitchers not getting a lot of swing and miss if they're keeping it on the ground. So great to have Santos back. You know, kind of the first deadline acquisition for the Mariners. Obviously, it was an offseason move, but essentially coming into this team around the trade deadline. And the bullpens held up pretty well. There's been some moments, but there's always moments with bullpens. But, you know, his last couple outings, Stanek hasn't been great. Gave up the home run to Springer on Sunday. I think Trevor Larnick hit a home run against him. Um, when they face Minnesota. So not at all that I'm saying that he's slowing down or anything like that. We're talking about Stanek, I think he's been fine, but getting another arm out there, it, and you can never have enough relievers. So hopefully now you have another high leverage guy to go with Munoz, um, Stanek at the back end. It sounds like Gabe Spire might be getting closer to coming back as well, maybe after the all-star break. So bullpen kind of stabilizing itself essentially versus having to make deals. But the all-star, Logan Gilbert, on his game today, gets a well-deserved sixth win of the season. ERA is 2.94. I think he's going to make one more start. Um, I think it's going to be the Sunday before the all-star break, so a decent chance he doesn't even pitch in the all-star game. In fact, he pitches Sunday. I don't think he can pitch in the all-star game. So, l listen, I would love to see Logan in that game, but at the end of the day, what's most important is the Mariners getting wins. You know, they've got a two-game lead in the AL West. It's going to be a battle with Houston. Your first series after the All-Star break is against Houston. You're going to need that rotation to be lined up. Kirby, Castillo, Gilbert, I, I don't know which order, but any type of order like that, you're going to need uh, those three lined up. So while I'd love to see Gilbert pitch in the All-Star game, probably not going to be in the cards. Uh, maybe Munoz will get in. Someone will bail out or something like that, and Munoz might get a chance to make the All-Star game. Offensively, listen, eight hits, or excuse me, eight runs, 13 hits. Two walks. They still struck out 11 times, but listen, I can live with the strikeouts when you're doing this. Here's the thing, guys, we're 93 games into the season. The Mariners are going to strike out. You would hope they can reduce it a little bit from their current rate, but this team is more than likely going to lead the league in strikeouts. And we can sit here and debate, oh, they said they were going to cut down on it in the offseason. They didn't. Sure. Like, that's all fair, but we know what this team is now. They are going to have strikeouts. But when you're mixing in the doubles, the home runs, the, the base hits to score runs today, you can live with it. I can live with 11 strikeouts when you're getting 13 hits and eight runs. No problem with it. Now, it makes it tough to be this consistent doing something like this, so I'd still like to see that number cut down. But that's what you're rooting for at this point. More games like this and just cut it down a little bit. They're going to lead the league in strikeouts. I'd be shocked at this point if they don't. But, you know, go from striking out 31% of the time to... 26. I don't know. That might even be too much of a jump to make at this point in the season, but something like that, just to, just to bounce back a little bit here. Funny enough, the top of the order for the Mariners uh, goes a combined 0 for 12. Now they do get on base three times because JP walks Garver and Rayleigh are both hit by pitches, but it wasn't the top of the order. It was actually the middle. It was actually the middle of the order for once. We talked about the role players being solid, but today the stars were stars. Um, now JP Crawford, tough game 0 for 4. Did have a leadoff walk, Helped get them that run in that first inning. Truthfully, they probably should have had more than two runs through two innings. Um, they left some guys on base there. But listen, I said on Twitter, the Mayors were on pace for nine runs. I'm not going to complain. Yes, they should have had more, but it was just good to see them jump on a starter and get some runs early. Um, Mazer, is that the starter for the, the Padres? Is that how you pronounce it? Mazer. Listen, I know he hasn't been very good this year, but the Mayors have struggled against some bad pitchers before. So I, I'm not going to be mad when they hit him. I'm not going to stand up here and go, well, the pitcher stunk. Yeah, not a very good pitcher, but the mayor still found a way, right? You, what do I always say? One, one of the things good teams do is they break even with good teams and beat bad teams. Okay, boy, that was fun. I'm not much of an editor, so we will not be editing that out. Let me swing around a little more. Again, having to do kind of a different setup today with the computer issues and everything. So we almost had no sound again there. Uh, sorry about that. So excited about the Mariners win. Uh, lost my train of thought there. Yeah, 
you know, you, you beat up on the bad teams, you break in with the good ones. So it applies kind of within the game too. beat up on the good, beat up on the bad starting pitchers. They shouldn't be dinged for that. That's what you're supposed to do. Now, do I think this is a sign that they're back, that this offense is going to take off and carry them? It's certainly a better sign than not doing it, but I'm going to need to see a little bit more before I truly declare anybody back, but you know, still good to see, still good to see, but yeah, JP tough game does start to get that lead off walk. Uh, Mitch Garver was 0 for 4, uh, was hit by a pitch. Luke Rayleigh was 0 for 4, also hit by a pitch. They do reach base. Julio Rodriguez, 4 for 4, 3 runs scored, 2 RBIs, double, home run, 2 singles. Was a triple shy of the cycle. Um, they did mention that his hamstring flared up a little bit, I think, but should be fine for tomorrow. I would have loved to see him get a shot to get the cycle, but I get it, right? You know, I was talking with Mariner Cerno, I'll give him, him credit for it. He was kind of like, is it worth it with the risk to have Julio trying to leg out a triple with a hurt hamstring, gets hurt more, misses time. You know, the cycle would have been fun. It would have been great. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is Julio being healthy for this team long term. So I, I get it. The fan, the Jay, the fan wants to see Julio get a shot at the cycle. Jay, the analyst, completely understands why they did that. So. Um, but a great game from Julio. And I, I've been hesitant to say he's back because I've been burned before. It's been a few games though now. Second game of the Baltimore series just missed a home run. I think get a hit in that game as well. The final game of the Baltimore series does get the home run and the double. Doesn't play much in the Blue Jays series, but did have a base hit and hit a couple balls hard in that first game. And then today, not only the home run, but he pulls the home run, crushes it. Um, gone at every stadium, double down the line and a couple singles. The singles were great, but we've seen that from Julio. We've talked about, we need to see the slugging and he pulls a double. He pulls the home run. Somebody struggled with this year, his first home run off a breaking ball this year. I mean, just, just incredible. So great to see, great to see. And hopefully this is it. Hopefully this is the start of Julio's breakout. It does feel a little bit more real this time than in a couple weeks past. So hopefully this is the start of something there. Uh, Dylan Moore pinched hit ground in the two double play. The big dumper, Cal Raleigh, has a huge game, three for five with four RBIs. Two home runs, homers from both sides of the plate. Second time he's done that in his career. Did it against Boston last year um, in Fenway Park. Does it again this year in San Diego. Also hits a double, which proved to be nice. Add a little insurance for the Mariners in that ninth inning. was good to see. Huge game from Cal. You, you need those guys to step up. Cal, Julio, Polanco had a good game today. You know, you can make acquisitions. You can bring guys in. But the core of this team has got to step up and play better baseball. And tonight they did. You know, Logan Gilbert's part of the core. He's been great all season, was great tonight. Gregory Santos, part Santos, part of the core, got the job done. JP didn't have a great game. When I talk about the core, I mean like JP, Cal, Julio, I'll throw Polanco in there because he was a big acquisition, right? You know, he's not part of the core in terms of like the young guys, but that was a big offseason acquisition for the team. So, you know, I'll throw him in there. And, and you know, listen, I don't think Cal's had a terrible season or anything. He's still been valuable and he's been super clutch, but, you know, his numbers could be a little bit better. And if you raised everybody here by 10%, probably looking at a four or five game lead in the AL West right now. Uh, Canzone one for three does leave the game. I think with a groin injury, he's going to have an MRI tomorrow. So we'll see, might make sense just to IL him such with the all-star break coming up and you can probably get him back by the Houston series. It would make sense. I think just to bring up, if he does go on the IL, I'll bring up like a Cade Marlowe, you know, you could make a case for class A, but I think you just want class A getting those everyday at bats. Marlowe can fill in a little bit there. I don't know. We'll see what they end up doing, and we'll see if Canzo needs to go on the IL. But you just hate to have him miss five games before the All-Star break and kind of waste that roster spot. Shame, too. You know, Canzo, I think he can live if he's out for a little bit. But he hits that double. You know, Canzo's a tough guy to get a gauge on. He hasn't been super clutch. Like, a lot of his moments have come in blowouts. I don't put a lot of stock necessarily into, oh, this guy's clutch and this guy's not but it does matter in the context of winning baseball games. So, you know, I, I don't really know what to make. I, I think he's still probably your, internally your best option for that role. Um, so I think it hurts, but I think you can survive it. Victor Robles, one for two with an RBI double. He came in for Canzone, scored that insurance run in the eighth inning, excuse me, in the ninth inning. Um, you know, can't say enough about Victor Robles. And not only, like we talked about, good defender, good base runner, his bat's never been amazing, and is there a decent chance that it still isn't amazing? Sure. 
We're still dealing with small sample sizes, but he looks the part, right? When you watch Victor Robles hit, he looks hitterish. He looks like a guy that can command the strike zone pretty well, knows when to swing. He's put some good swings on the ball. Even tonight, rings the double down the line. And a couple pitches before, I uh, hit one down the left field line that almost got out. So uh, really, really encouraging to see from Victor Robles and a guy that needs to play more. You know, will it last? I don't know. But while it's happening, ride it out, right? Let him play. Jorge Polanco, really solid game. Two for four, a couple singles, a walk, and even stung the ball in his last at-bat. Um, I think it was like a 9-10 expected batting average off the bat there. So um, a, a decent chance Polanco could have reached base four times tonight. Listen, I made my video on Sunday. I stand by it. Um, I called to get rid of Polanco, um, France, and Hanniger essentially, saying it's time for roster moves. I would love, it's like, listen, it's like the Godfather, right? It's not personal. It's business. Now, no one's getting whacked here, but you know, it's not a personal thing. I'm, I love Ty France. He's a great guy. Good teammate. I love Mitch Hanniger. Um, I hope he's on the coaching staff when he does decide to hang it up. I don't know Polanco as well. He hasn't been a Mariner for very long, but I'm sure he's putting in the work and I would love nothing more than these guys to be awesome. It would be much easier, right? Because they are internal options. They're here. Um, it's much harder that, than having to go out and make a trade or a free agency signing or even calling someone up, a young guy that you're not sure and you don't want to hurt their confidence right away. The best thing for the Mariners would be Ty France and Jorge Polanco figuring this out. And so far today, Polanco did it, right? And, and um, Mariners sort of turned me on to an article or showed me an article, um, or I don't think he showed me the article, but he mentioned it, that Divish had mentioned that he doesn't see anything happening with Polanco until after the All-Star break. And here's the thing, if that's going to be the case, then you should play him because giving him three at-bats in six games isn't going to tell you anything. So if that's kind of their breaking point or where they're looking at, play him and see what you can get. Tonight, you got good production out of him. And if you can continue to get that, you know who knows, right? Like last year, this offense didn't really break out till August. Polanco's been a good hitter in his career. Maybe, maybe. And I know, like, Jay, weren't you just calling for these guys to be gone on Sunday? I was. But they're obviously sticking with it for a little bit. So right now I'm rooting for him. I, I want Polanco to do well because, man, would that be huge. Jorge Polanco has been a good baseball player. That takes care of second base for you if you can get him hitting like he has in the past. So I, I'm all for it. Ty France, one for three today. Uh, also hit by a pitch, a ringing double, which scored Polanco in the second inning. Uh, you know, again, like if Ty France can get going, that would be great. That would be the best thing for this team is to have tie in, in terms of first base. And then you might say, well, I think Locklear is better. Maybe, but like, then you have that option there and you can make a move in the off season. Be great if Ty France could get going. I have my doubts if these guys keep it going. Curious to see how they do tomorrow against Michael King, much tougher pitching matchup. We'll see if they can get a little something going against him. That would be very encouraging. Tonight was a good start, but we've got to see it more consistently in Josh Rojas one four four. Again, I, I think one of the easiest, easier wins of the year, or I shouldn't say easier, but like stress-free wins of the season for the Mariners. I mean, they were up 4 nothing in the third. Logan Gilbert comes out the first couple innings, doesn't allow a base runner, just boom, one, two, three innings, settles in, doesn't allow the Padres to get any of that momentum back from the Mariners scoring a couple early runs there and shuts them down. And yeah, a little dicey maybe in the eighth inning, but nothing that I think any of us were ever too nervous about. I think the Mariners felt like they were in control of this game pretty much from start to finish and needed it, right? Needed a win like that. It's been a tough, tough sledding. Three and six homestand, three and six road trip before then. Six straight series losses. Technically, they break that because they cannot lose this series. They can only split it. So you have broken your six straight series loss curse here with a win today. Tomorrow's going to be tough. King's a really good pitcher. Bryce Miller struggled on the road. Um, it, it'll be a tough one. You, boy, if you could find a way to sweep this little two game series, it'd be huge, especially with, uh, Houston getting Miami this week. So it, it would be great to find a way to get that. If they can somehow squeeze out a win tomorrow, I'd be lying if I wasn't super optimistic about it, but you know, listen, if you can split with San Diego should be able to do some damage against the angels. You know, I can take that. If you can split here, go to Anaheim, win three out of four, you're probably in first place at the deadline or tied or something around along those lines. So, you know, you got to feel pretty good. And this team just needed a win. They just needed to find a way to get a W and they did it tonight. And, and the big guns showed up, right? Logan Gilbert pitched like an ace. Julio played like an MVP. Cal played like a, you know, uh, cornerstone catcher tonight. 
needed that, needed that from all those guys. So hopefully they can keep it going tomorrow. It's not just a one game thing and the momentum can carry over and they can get another W tomorrow. Remember to hit that like button, comment your thoughts on the game down below, and don't forget to hit subscribe. Again, sorry for the first video being up in silent, and apologize for dropping the microphone here to start this one. I'm at least in the middle of it, so forgive me for that, and hopefully the sound's working on this one. I'm not uploading another one. So have a great night, everybody, and as always, go Mariners. Peace.